Hey, saints, TIs, children of the most high. Um, this is going to be kind of a short video. This is the second time I've made it. It cut me off halfway through. So I'm going to try to wrap it up. Um, I was not going to talk about these dreams or this one dream because it was so awful and graphic. But Sis Roxanne, shout out to you. She texted me last night and gave me a suggestion on someone to watch. I've never heard of him, and I'm I'm so grateful that she sent this. Y'all might want to listen to him as well. His name is, hold on, let me get it on my phone. I know it's David. David Hodges. And darn it. I'm sorry, I don't have. Let me see if it pops up. Oh, here it is. Q&A with David Hodges. And it's called The Common Sense Show. I'll show y'all what he looks like. Here he is. The Common Sense Show. And this is what's leading me to come on. Hold on. Oh, boy. My phone is so hacked. I can't even turn this thing off. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this dream because it was so disturbing and graphic. I had it either the 5th or the 6th, so just a couple days ago. But... After I listened to this man, David Hodges, he talked about a similar dream. Now, his wasn't graphic like mine, but it was dealing with an invasion. And I believe that I needed to come on and share this. Uh, this may be kind of disturbing what I'm going to say that I saw. So if you have a queasy stomach, it upset me so bad I couldn't go back to sleep. Then I had another dream last night. Both dreams I was flying, and all of my dreams recently I've been flying. So I believe this symbolizes our glorified bodies. Um, several other, um, several other believers, saints of the Most High, have also had dreams about flying, and we've been shown. Um, that we're split off into, we're in a big group, could possibly be the 144, and then we're split off into teams where we do search and rescue in the Great Tribulation. And uh, several of us have had confirmation on that. I won't name names, but there's at least five other people here on YouTube that have had similar confirmations about uh, we go into different teams during the Tribulation. And I believe this is what I was being shown. Um, also, the tree outside has more burnt on it. I'm going to try to show you all that after I'm done, just to document it, which I am assuming. Shout out to Steve. Steve um, from Have No Fear, I think. Um, he is documenting how the, all the trees die around us as well, or they cut the trees down. And I believe that that's the uh, warfare that they're doing. They're spraying stuff or they're hitting us with what do weapons or whatever. But I'll try to show it at the end. Last time I did it on the video that just cut off. Um, it cut, cut me off. So I'll try it again. But anyway, this is just going to be a short video about a couple of dreams that I had. So this is the gruesome one. Okay, I dreamt I was in a line. Uh, which to me reminded me of like at the DMV, except it wasn't because uh, there wasn't that many people there. There was a blonde lady in her 30s about, um, and she said with a mad face, your name, like real serious. And I told her my first name, but I didn't say my last name. But it was like she already knew who I was. And so then she said my first and last name, and I said yes. And then she said, congratulations, you're approved. You can leave. All I remember is I was trying to leave from this house I was at, which looks similar to where I'm at now. Um, it had big windows. However, I don't think it was this house. Um, the windows were a little bit different, and they were wider. Rather than long floor-to-ceiling windows, they went across. And I was on the second story, though. But I knew that I had to leave. I had to get out of there. And apparently, nobody was allowed to leave unless you got your papers. Do you have your papers? 
Show me your papers. And yes, it reminds me of Nazi Germany, this, this dream. Okay, so she said I was approved and I could leave. And I knew that I was trying to get out of the house and the town I was staying at because I felt something bad was about to happen. And I knew that the Lord was warning me to leave, which he will do for us. If you're wondering where you're to go during the trip, he will guide you out of where you're supposed to be, or we will be supernaturally protected. Um, I also knew that it was really hard to be approved to leave. So I was so happy and grateful that I'd been approved. She then handed me a piece of paper and on the piece of paper, it said something like I got a job on a cruise line or something, which there again symbolizes the water and also departure, departure, leaving in a ship, um, going through the firmament possibly, which I've been being shown three different dreams, going through a wall of water, like flying through it. And I couldn't believe that I got approved on a cruise ship because of my, my background clear. Because I have DUI. Anyway. <laughs> and as I started to walk off, she looked again and she said she was sorry, but I didn't get approved. And this actually always happens to me in real life or has in the past because I'm trying to focus positive that the Lord is bringing us out of the, these testings. But I will get a job, and then the day before I'm supposed to start, they'll either call or I'll call them to find out my schedule or what time I'm supposed to be there. And then they say, I'm sorry, we decided to hire from within, or the position is not available anymore, or just uh, the, the lady, uh, one time I was going to replace somebody that was leaving because they were pregnant and uh, she's decided to stay just all different kinds of excuses. And it will always be like, I'm really pumped up. I'm getting it. I've got a job. And then it's a let now, or I'll get there. And then they'll say they don't need me. <laughs> so it was kind of reminding me of that. Like give us something just to let us back down. Um, I'm not sure the meaning of that, but she said she was sorry, but I didn't get it. So it was kind of symbolic of being gang stalked in the dream. But she said I could still go somehow. So I don't know if that meant I can still leave, but I didn't have a job when I leave. I don't know. So I went back to my room, which was upstairs. And again, there was a lot of big windows and I started packing. And in the dream, I was trying to figure out what I really needed to take because I wasn't going to be able to bring much. I had one big tote bag, which actually is symbolic, kind of not symbolic, but it is kind of how I've been living. I had one backpack with three outfits in it and one pair of shoes for the last half a year. So, but this was a tote bag rather than my backpack. So I don't know if it means... I need to look up the meaning of tote. I know it means like lugging, taking along. But the interesting part was where I'm at now, I'm in the South, you heard me? And um, it's still hot enough to wear t-shirts and shorts. And I don't even own a coat anymore. Um, in the dream though, I remembered, I thought I would need a thick coat. And I remember thinking, I wish I had a moto jacket. You know, one of those cool looking, I had one a long time ago, but they stole it. Um, one of those cool like bomber jackets. And even that's symbolic because it was like a bomber jacket symbolizing we're going to be bombed. Bomb Iran, bomb, bomb, bomb Iran. And I was thinking I needed a coat, but I, I realized I didn't even have one. As I was picking things to wear, I looked out and a huge group of Chinese people, and this is where the man named David Hodges dreamt there was a Chinese invasion coming to his house. This is what I dreamt. And I dreamt it two or three nights ago and I hadn't watched his video yet. So it did not influence me at all. Okay, so a huge group of Chinese people, they were dressed in white with protective gear like you would wear if, if uh, you were going into a toxic situation. They even had like the um, head covering on that was white. 
and then they had masks. Um, they were they were marching up to the house. Um, the interesting part was they were carrying red red flags with the crosses on them like the Templar Knights carried. This is what the cross looked like. Hold on. Look like this. Not all the way down, like, you know, when you see Jesus where it goes all the way down, it was short like this. And it kind of reminded me of that video I did where the cross and when you break it, when you break all the sides, It becomes the swastika. Yeah. And so that's what it reminded me of was Nazi Germany. Uh, they were red flags and with the, with the crosses on them. And the crosses were white. They were carrying something. And what it reminded me of is I'm not Catholic or wasn't ever Catholic, but how the Catholics have those things that they walk up to and they swing them and the, the smoke comes out of it. I don't know what it's called, but that's what they had. They were hanging from a chain and they were swinging them and all the smoke and fog was coming out. And I realized that it was toxic gas they were spraying. And I said to someone else that was in my room, oh no, it's too late. And then I realized there was no way that we could get out the bottom floor that they were coming in the house and they were taking over neighborhoods and they were spraying this poison toxic gas. So I opened the upstairs window just as they kicked in the downstairs door and were coming inside with a toxic gas. But instead of falling out of the window, I flew over a Chinese army and I flew over their heads. I was far enough up where um, you know, I was clearing the rooftop flying, but I was praying that they didn't look up and see me kind of like that dream I had where, um, I was praying the cop didn't see me because I thought he was going to shoot me. And instead he handed me a key that was like three weeks or a month ago. I dreamt that. Um, but anyway, I managed to fly over them and I'm flying above trees and then I saw a man down below who had also escaped. He was on foot though. And he was walking through a wealthy man's property. When another man saw him, he asked, are you? And he, he said, here to court. And it was some older rich woman. And they used the word court as in like, it reminded me of the old days where they said, um, the men were courting the women or something. That's the word that he used, which I found interesting. Like it was from a long time ago. Are you here to court somebody? The man was probably in his fifties and the woman, I knew instantly that she was like in her late eighties. And so he really didn't want to date her, but he knew that he had to pretend that that's who he was here for or he'd be turned over to this Chinese army. So he said yes. And he pretended that he was there to see the elderly woman. And he somehow had flowers in his hand. I don't know if he picked them to make it look more legit. They were a strange looking lavender flower. Okay, that's all I remember. Then I saw my dog Beignet and she was running and so I swooped down to grab her, which I've done this in another dream as well, because she was very close to the ledge of some water. And I told her, no, no, stay there. And she stopped. And then I swooped down and I got her. And uh, then I flew back up. Um, I guess I took her up into heaven. I don't know, because next thing I know, I was flying back to the house that I had originally escaped from, where the, where the uh, Chinese army had kicked in the door. And now that I'm thinking about this, I think the whole purpose of me leaving there was to get my dog who was outside. Once she was safe, then I flew back. I flew back to the house to help others, but I realized it was too late. 
there was two women, two women, and this is kind of gross, y'all. I don't usually have dreams like this, so it really was disturbing. But there were two women. One woman had a child, uh, like a baby, and it was either still in her stomach. I know this is gross. I apologize. I, again, I don't usually have dreams like this. Um, it was either in her stomach and she wasn't, she hadn't had it yet, or she was holding it by her stomach, but it was a baby. I know it was a baby and they were breathing in the toxic gas because there was no way to escape. And one of them said, it doesn't hurt. Just let it work. Like they knew they were about to die and there was no way to, to stop it. And their faces started having boils all over them. And then their faces started melting off, y'all. It was gruesome. One lady said, like, she was calm about it. Like, they knew they just had to accept their fate. She said, the right side hurts worse than the other side. And the other one lifted up her dress up and revealed the baby in her stomach, whose head was peeking out, and said, I thought we'd grow old together. Now what happens? Like she didn't know where they were going to go. Like were they going to heaven or hell? I don't know. And then they started melting and they looked like they had no mouths. It looked like their mouths were sealed shut. It was horrible. And it was like I was watching it from above. Okay, so I'm just putting out there what I dreamt. And yeah, it was 100% it was a Chinese army. I don't follow politics or anything like that. I don't watch the news. I do. I am led to um, channels that, you know, uh, Christian channels that may speak about some things that are going on. But for the most part, I don't watch the news. So this is my second dream of a Chinese army invading. Another one was about a year ago. Okay. Then last night's dream, I wish I would have woke up and remembered it, but I hadn't been sleeping real good. So I only remember a tiny bit of it. There was a disaster that came not only to the United States, but it seemed like it was the whole earth. Buildings were filled up with water and I could see water way high up on floors in the skyscrapers. And myself and another man, which I believe is on my team, were flying above the disasters. And looking down, I saw a giant starfish. It was really beautiful. And a lot of sea creatures. And uh, I guess they were dying. And a huge wave going under over buildings, which I believe that it could have possibly been New York. It was like a really big city. It could have been Houston too, I don't know. And then I saw a banner go across the sky with the colors of the rainbow on it and then the word rainbow appeared on it and something interesting about that that's all i remember by the way um something interesting about the rainbow is as we know in the bible um after the flood the lord said the sign of the rainbow would be the covenant to noah and you know his um his offspring that the Lord would never again flood the earth. So I found it interesting that it said rainbow, yet there was a wave going over it. So I don't know if this means it's not the Lord flooding it, it's the New World Order, I don't know. But um, the interesting part with the rainbow, I have a story to tell about a rainbow. Um, I know the date when this happened. I was dating a guy that went to LSU and he was from Baton Rouge and I was from Texas. But we met and started dating because we almost hit each other. <laughs> yeah, the symbolic of our relationship was a wreck. Uh, we almost hit each other at a gas station. And I was in Houston visiting my parents. My mom was alive then. And this was a long time ago. And uh, this was actually in... 2000 is when I think we met, but the rainbow thing was in 01, okay? So we decided we were both living in Texas, Texas, and we decided we were going to the LSU game. He was really into it, and we weren't getting along really good, and I really didn't want to go, 
because at the LSU game, you have to sit outside. It's uncovered stadium. It's called Tiger Stadium. And it's real wild. And I'd never been to a game. After that, I loved it. I was glad I went. But at the time, I thought, oh, boy, I wouldn't really want not into football or anything. But I went for him. It was pouring down rain, and it's about a five-and-a-half-hour drive. No, I take that back. It's about four and a half hours to Baton Rouge. It's five and a half to New Orleans. And it was pouring down rain the whole way. And I'm thinking, are we really going to go to this game and sit outside in the rain? And uh, I started praying about it. And I was asking him if he could just drive me back because we were only an hour outside of Houston. And he's like, no, just just, just go. It'll, it'll be fine or whatever. So I started praying in the car and I wasn't even saved back then, but I did believe in the Lord and I was starting to read the Bible. And this was in 2001. The date was September 8th of 01. There's significance to this story. And so I start praying to myself, not out loud, Lord, um, if this is you and everything's going to be okay, because I just felt like he and I were about to break up and I really did love him, but um, my, my job, there was something going on with my job. I worked for Enron and I kept thinking something's not right there. I was just a, a receptionist. So I didn't know the whole Enron scandal that was about to unfold, but I could also sense something in the atmosphere. Even back then I was like uneasy. I knew something was going to happen. And so that's what I prayed. And I said, if this is you, Lord, then, uh, let there be a rainbow. I kid y'all not. I promise y'all I said this. Let there be a rainbow over the stadium as a sign that you're you're with me. And I told my ex-boyfriend's name was Steve. Another Steve, not Steve from Have No Fear, but another Steve. Scuba Steve! <laughs> I said, I just prayed a prayer and God said, I told him God because he, I didn't really say the Lord back then. I called him God. I said, God said that there's going to be a rainbow over the stadium and we're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. We get there and actually made a detour to his parents' house that lived in Baton Rouge um, to get ponchos, the clear ponchos to put over us because it was still pouring down rain. And they don't allow um, umbrellas in the stadium because you might poke somebody. You might poke somebody. So we stopped there. We got the little poncho things. And we got to the stadium. It's still raining. We're sitting. He's like diehard LSU. That's where he went to school. So we're sitting there in the uncovered stadium. And they do kickoff. It's still raining. But this time now it's like not pouring down anymore. But it's still raining a little bit and sprinkling. And they have kickoff. And as soon as they kicked off the ball, the sky opened up. It stopped raining. The sky opened up completely bright. And this is a night game, y'all. And a bright white light to the left of the, of the stadium, like, appeared out of nowhere. A huge white light. And not one, but two, a double rainbow, complete rainbow from one side to the other, went over the stadium. The LSU stadium is full of, full of a bu bunch of rambunctious drunkards from Louisiana. And for the stadium to go completely quiet, I've never, ever seen that since. It's normally super loud. The entire stadium completely was silent as they watched that bizarre thing. Um, when I look over at my ex-boyfriend, his face turned white like he'd seen a ghost and his mouth dropped open. Because I had said there's going to be a rainbow over the stadium. He couldn't even believe it. It was so wild, y'all, that they put it on the cover of the newspaper there in Baton Rouge. I had a copy of it. I had it framed, but of course they stole that too. I've had everything I own stolen multiple times. But I'm sure y'all can look it up. It really happened, and I was really there. And I really said there was a rainbow going to be over the stadium. It was on September 8th of 2001. So this is the significance of that. There was not one, but two rainbows, okay? And three days later was 911. And a couple months later, I quit Enron. Two weeks after I quit, because I just felt there was something wrong there. And I didn't enjoy it either. And I didn't care about the money. I just wanted to have a happy place to work. 
go to your happy place. Um, and then I moved to New Orleans all in those two months after that. So three significant things happened. 911, I brought actually four. 911, I broke up with Steve. I uh, I quit my job and I moved to New Orleans. And so I find that interesting that the stream I had where we're seeing devastation and we're flying over, there's a banner that comes out and it says rainbow. So I'm just giving y'all a heads up. I believe something is afoot at the Circle K. Okay, so now that I got all that out, I wanted to tell y'all I got my rent paid. I'm in here till the end of the month, and then I'm believing that uh, other believers, saints of the Most High, awesome, awesome friends and family, which y'all are my friends and family, my true friends and family, um, will come through, and I'll be able to stay here again unless we're called up. But I wanted to give a shout out. If y'all don't want me to say your names, which one saint doesn't want me to say her name? But she paid for most of it. And I really appreciate it. I love you, sister. And prayers for you. You really are a saint. But another sister, I said I had 160 left to come up with my rent. Sister Kaylee, thank you so much. She came up with it. She can't, she paid the rest of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, again, if y'all don't want me to say your names, just email me, jubilinaredeemed at gmail. Um, and I won't say your names next month. But as it is, none of y'all told me not to say it other than one person, which again, she's awesome. But I'm going to give a shout out to everybody. Um, let's see, one, two, three four, five of y'all donated for this month. And then the rest of y'all is for last month, but I didn't say thank you to, to y'all. So I want to say y'all's names. I won't say your last names though. So thank you, Sister Kaylee. Thank you, Sis Ann. Why? Your last name starts with a Y. Thank you, Sister Jan. Uh, Sis J, I know you don't want me to say your name either. You're awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amanda, thank you, thank you. And then last month, and then I think also this month, Sue, thank you so much. And Tanya, thank you so much. I don't know if you say it, Tanya or Tanya. And Kelly, thank you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate it. Rasha. Again, Tanya, this is for last month. Jen, David, Ralph. Ralph, you're still with me. I can't believe it. I think you've been commenting for a couple years now. Or, I mean, uh, helping. Ken, Tanya. I think I said that already. Hot Hannah. Okay. Those are the ones that donated last month, and then five of y'all donated this month, and y'all helped me to stay here. I'm so grateful. I don't have to be on the road again, and I'll try to come on as the Lord leads me. <laughs> funny. That's funny. Um, I'll try to come on as the Lord leads me. I'm asking for prayers for my dad. He's bedridden. He's been bedridden a couple months now. And uh, he can't breathe. He's on a ventilator thing. Could y'all please pray for his supernatural healing and that he gets saved? And also, there's a new channel I've started watching over the past, I think I started watching it a month ago, because a couple of y'all, not just one, but like three of y'all commented that I should watch her. And her name is Amanda Grace. Um, her husband is in the hospital. His name is Chris. Can we please pray for him? All right. I love y'all. And again, uh, just keep your armor on. I've been under some severe attacks lately, but uh, overcoming by the grace of God. And I so appreciate y'all, not only your donations, but all your wonderful comments and your prayers. They mean a lot to me. Even if I can't get back uh, emailing y'all back, I read all the comments and they really do help me. And uh, it gives me motivation to keep on keeping on. So I do believe that something is about to happen. We're not to have fear. Again, we'll either be guided to where we're supposed to be 
or it'll be supernaturally protected where we're at. But because I've been having so many dreams about flying, I believe that it's time for us to fly. All right, I love y'all. Prayers for everybody. I'm out.